Good afternoon and welcome to our live stream program, What is Memorial Day? My name is Maggie Hartley. I'm the Associate Director for Programming and Events and I am so excited that you guys have joined us today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of this and conclude with a poppy activity at the end. So I do want to remind you guys, if you have not already, go ahead into this link here and download your worksheet. It looks just like this and as someone who tried to make their own poppy earlier today this is definitely the way to go um, with the lines and all of that so i'll show this link again at right before we get into the craft and if you're looking for this link an easy way to get to it is also within our chat feature so head on in there if you've not already told us where you're watching from please let us know we love knowing where everyone's tuning in from because um, it's usually all over the country so Memorial Day is a week away. It's very hard to believe. It feels like at times, you know, this quarantine's gone by really slow and sometimes it's gone by really fast. It's been two months and we are a week away from the unofficial start of summer. And I know a lot of people when they think about Memorial Day, they think about cookouts or camping or going to the beach and spending time out on the lake. But there's so much more to Memorial Day than just that. And um, of course, we, many of us know that it's a time to honor those who have died during war. Um, but I want to kind of explore a little bit more about that. Now, what exactly is patriotism? Because there's lots of patriotic holidays, and we'll talk about those in just a second. But patriotism is really a way of, you know, showing your pride in your country. And so for the United States, we have lots of different holidays that do that, that are more than just Memorial Day. And I've named a few on this next slide. So patriotic holidays can include President's Day, Armed Forces Day, which was this past Saturday, Memorial Day, Flag Day, Independence Day, Patriot's Day, which is um, September 11th, POW MIA Day, the third, um, Friday in September, Constitution Day, and Veterans Day. And there's a, quite a few more that other people consider to be patriotic holidays as well. Now, a lot of people, when you think about a holiday, it may be like Christmas, um, but really a holiday is more than just an opportunity to see family and friends. It's a day to remember something that has occurred. So at Christmas, if you're Christian, then that's a day that you take time to remember the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, Thanksgiving's time to remember the founding of the United States and togetherness and family. Um, so in the same vein, these are holidays that we take time to remember really why we are proud of our nation and different significant events during that. Now, Memorial Day is one of three major holidays that we used to honor our military. Those three holidays include Armed Forces Day, which is the third Saturday of May, Memorial Day, which is the last Monday of May, and Veterans Day, which is November 11th. Now the difference between each of these, a lot of people confuse them and think they're all about the same, they're just about the military, but there's different significances to each one. So Armed Forces Day is about our active duty military or reservists, those who are currently serving in our armed forces or military. Memorial Day is the day that we remember those who have died during war. And then Veterans Day is the day that we remember those who have served. And so this one is actually a picture from one of our Veterans Day ceremonies where we're recognizing our Marine Corps veterans. And so even though each of these days is designed to remember our military, they each have different focuses. Now, not to say that you can't also honor veterans on Armed Forces Day or Memorial Day, but there is a specific focus for each one. Now, the history of Memorial Day, because it didn't just happen, um, it actually started with the Civil War. So the Civil War was one of the largest um, wars fought on American soil, I believe it was the largest, and so there were so many fatalities after that war that people really wanted to find a way to pay tribute to their dead. And so it started out as Decoration Day. This was mostly for 
Union soldiers, the Confederates, also had their own version of this. But these um, posters are really just representing the women and children who are going to their loved ones' graves to remember them. They would decorate their graves with wreaths and flowers, um, even plants, flags, you name it. It was a way that they would remember their dead. And so eventually it would evolve with World War I to Memorial Day because we were fighting another large war with lots of casualties. And as each war would happen, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the global war on terror, Memorial Day has really encompassed each of those wars and the dead from those. And it wasn't until 1971 that it was moved to the last Monday of May. Up until then, it was actually on May 30th. But the federal government decided to make it a federal holiday, which meant that all federal government offices would be closed. And they chose it to be on a Monday so that their employees would get a three-day weekend. And that's kind of how the unofficial start of summer also began with this. Now, how do we commemorate Memorial Day as a whole? Well, there's lots of different ways. Um, a lot of people do their own individual types of commemorations. But... I want to point out just a few, two that are in D.C. and then one that's here at the National D-Day Memorial. And typically each Memorial Day, we hold a large ceremony where we remember those who've died during warfare. And in D.C., they hold the Memorial Day Parade. And they also end up doing a special flag, placing flags at each of the graves in Arlington. Now, one thing I do want to point out from these pictures is if you notice in the bottom right corner there's an active duty soldier who's placing um, flags at each of the graves at Arlington. Now Memorial Day is for those who've died but it also is a way for veterans to connect with memories from the war, from buddies that they've lost. Um, it's a way for them to heal and process what has gone on um, so really, this day is very special for them as well, and I think it's really important to recognize veterans as they more than likely have lost someone during war that they trained with that was really their buddy, their brother in arms. I know one um, World War II veteran, I interviewed him about two years ago for a similar program like this, and he started singing the 1922 song, My Buddy, which was written as a result of World War I, as a soldier was reflecting on losing his best friend and just how painful that was. And so this day is a day of remembrance. It's a day of healing for veterans and, and really a day where we honor those who gave their lives for freedom. So there's lots of different ways you can do it through ceremonies, parades, or laying, re um, laying wreaths and placing flags at a cemetery. Now, there are two major symbols that are associated with M Memorial Day. Um, the first one I want to talk about is the gold star. Um, if you notice here on the left, there is a gold star banner hanging within a window. That signifies that someone in that household has died during war. It became very popular during World War I and then again with World War II. You don't see it quite as much today, but I do want to show you guys this gold star flag right here. This gold star flag belonged to the Womack family from just outside of Lynchburg, Virginia. Daniel Womack was a part of the 116th Regiment and was killed on June 6, 1944. Now, what's really interesting and a really cool tie to Memorial Day, in a sense, is a French couple had adopted Daniel Womack's grave at Normandy and would decorate it every June 6th, kind of going back to that whole idea of Decoration Day. Um, eventually, they would connect with Bob Slaughter, our founder of the National D-Day Memorial, and create a lasting bond between the Womack family and this French couple. Um, and so this would have been hung in their window and will signify to their neighbors and their community that they had lost someone they loved during the war. Now today, gold stars 
family, if they still exist, there probably is someone that you know or familiar with that has experienced the loss of a loved one during warfare, during the global war on terror, during the Gulf War, Korea, Vietnam. In some of the ways that we pay tribute to them today, one is through the Gold Star Families Memorial Monument. And we have this one here at the National D-Day Memorial. It's customized on the back to tell the story of the Bedford Boys and June 6th. But really it's a tribute to the Gold Star mothers, fathers, and other relatives who lost someone they loved during the war. And if you've ever been to the World War II Memorial, they actually used little gold stars to represent the number of men who died during World War II. Each star represents 100 Americans who died during World War II, which if you stand in front of it, it's just amazing just to capture that loss. Um, and so gold stars are very important to Memorial Day. You'll often see that used, not quite as much though as the poppy. Now, I have my little poppy that I got last year from um, some folks from a VFW. You'll often see around Memorial Day and Veterans Day, VFWs, um, Veterans of Foreign Wars groups, American Legions, and other veterans groups passing out poppies um, at Walmart, Food Lion, any grocery store you may go to. Um, they do this as a way to remember our dead and to honor our veterans. And so you've probably seen these before. Now, the poppy became very popular and associated with Memorial Day as a result of World War I. Um, when you think of poppies, a lot of people think of the poem in Flanders Field. I'm going to read that and we're going to talk a little bit more about the significance of poppies. So in Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Poppies are native to France, um, and so a lot of the fighting for the Americans was in France, and also significant for um, the D-Day invasion as well. We'll talk about that in a second, but a lot of these battlefields were covered with poppies and you know it symbolized in a way the blood of the dead as well and so seeing poppies in these fields especially today as you go through them and tour is incredibly moving and i had the opportunity to go to normandy about two years ago and seeing the first battlefield and actually I had took pause because as I looked out towards the English Channel, there were fields of poppies. And it just reminded me of the significance of this invasion. These poppies represent those who've died, the blood that was shed, and that's how significant it is. And so that's one of the reasons why poppies are so associated with Memorial Day today. Now, as I said, there'd be another reminder before we get into the activity. If you've not already done so, download the template. You can also just have a blank sheet of paper. Um, I have a red sheet of paper, because I'm going to show you guys a way to do it on your own, too. Um, but let's switch gears just a little bit. I'm going to have poppies behind me so you guys can see. They're red with little black centers, very um, tall, thin, green stems. So feel free to add one of those if you would like. Move over to where my stuff is. So we have, I cut out a few already, made my first little poppy. It'll end up looking like this. Um, did two actually, right there. And then I made one by making a bunch of parts. Doesn't quite look as good as this one, but there's definitely different ways you can do that. You can draw your own to however you want to do that. But really the significance of making these poppies is I want to encourage you guys to make some poppies and send it to veterans that you know. Like I said earlier, um, Memorial Day is very significant, especially for those who have served, as they know men 
and women who've died during combat. And so sending an encouraging message to these veterans on Memorial Day is really significant. It will uplift their spirits, especially as we're going through a very isolating time ourselves. So even if you don't end up making a poppy, just write a note to a veteran as well. But let's get started. I'm gonna do the template first. So I'm gonna switch over to our document camera so you guys can see it. I recommend doing the coloring first before you start cutting, um, just because I think it's easier because it's hard for me to draw in between the lines. We'll see. I think we're having some technical difficulties. I think the mouse is on the... No, it should be back on there. I'll go ahead and start coloring while we're waiting. And you guys can do the same. I'm not always great at coloring between the lines. So I have to take my time a little bit more so. But if you're gonna make this on your own, I encourage you guys to actually draw little hearts. If you notice, they're actually little fat hearts um, on here. So if you're gonna make your own, just draw really fat hearts, four of them, and connect them on your own. So let's try to get this going. I'm using a red. Red, of course, is the color. I've seen some darker ones too but I like bright red. I'm only gonna make one just for time's sake. I don't think you guys wanna see me color three of them. I think that'd be a little too much. So like I said, take your time, color this, um, make you know your own if you want to have a little bit of a greater challenge as well. Um, you can also create a field of poppies. There's some really pretty cards to have a field of them, and that's what you know they look like in their native um, areas, of course. Try to get a little bit quicker. I'm not quite as neat when I start going faster, but I do want to get to the cutting just because you guys don't want to watch me do this the whole time. But I do want to give you guys somewhat of an example of both this one and doing one freehand before I turn it over to you guys. Now, I will want to see whatever you guys end up making. So if you guys are making poppies, take pictures of them um, and tag us in it. We'd love to see what you guys end up making and the cards that you end up sending to veterans as well. Now, don't forget Memorial Day is next Monday. And I'll talk a little bit more about we're, what we're doing to be socially distant, but also still paying tribute to those who died in war. So this middle part, I've started on that, and that is black using a Sharpie because I couldn't find a good black marker. Okay, so mine is there. And of course you can take the time to cut it out yourself. I'm not gonna do that for you guys right now. Um, but I will show you guys the finished products will look like this. It'll, it will fold and you technically can cut within the edges here too to make it look more like a poppy wood with their individual petals. If you have any pipe cleaners, you could potentially attach it to a pipe cleaner. But there you go. There's that poppy there. Now you can take a red sheet of paper and like I said, just do fat parts. So something that would look like that and do four of those, cut them out and make sure you do the black center. Just like that. Now, please feel free to take your time with making this. We can go ahead and switch. Um, 
I don't want to take too much time making a craft for you guys, but you know, take your time, make as many of these as you would like, glue them onto a card and write a note to a veteran. Um, many veterans are in retirement homes and um, there's local VA hospitals in pretty much every region of the country. Um, so you can always send them there as well. Now, just a reminder, as we finish up our poppies, tag us in your social media post, parents, if you're um, having your children do this. You can also use the hashtag DDayEDU. Um, you can put a picture within our Facebook event, which is how most of you guys found out about this program or as a comment within the video recording if you're watching this on Memorial Day or after, or you can email it to education at ddayorg Now, it's time for questions. So if you guys have any questions, put them within the chat feature or within the Q&A, um, and we'll get started with those shortly. I know that um, many of you guys are still working on your poppies and thinking about the significance of them, um, you know, Memorial Day is coming up. It is going to be a much different Memorial Day. You're not going to see the large parades in Washington, D.C. Arlington's already announced that they're not going to be open to viewing the flags um, like they normally are. And even here at the National D-Day Memorial, we're going to be doing a virtual ceremony, um, a video that is very honoring to those who've died, very reminiscent of the ceremonies that we would have here on site. And so that'll go live on our Facebook page and also on our website on Monday, May 25th. Um, the same's gonna happen with our June 6th um, commemoration of the 70, I put 73rd, oh my goodness, 76th anniversary. <laughs> of D-Day. Wow, the years go by fast. <laughs> um, so it'll be the 76th anniversary of D-Day on June 6th, so the same thing will be happening there. Um, we're really prioritizing social distancing with both of these and still paying tribute to those who served on D-Day, died on D-Day, and same for Memorial Day. We have some other programs that will be coming up. Um, mostly lunchbox lectures geared towards adults, so the turning points of 1942 this coming Thursday, uh, propaganda posters of World War II on June 1st, and then finally the CBI, the China, Burma, India portions of World War II on June 11th. Now let's see, do we have any questions, John? No questions right now. Well, I know this was a quick program. Um, really wanted to highlight really what is Memorial Day in a very basic way um because I know a lot of people just think of it as cookout and the unofficial start of summer but it is a very meaningful holiday one where we should all take pause and remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms um and so Memorial Day is just one day that we as a country remember them but we also should remember them every day as well as we do here at the National D-Day Memorial we don't have any questions. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you think of any questions later on, please reach out to us. You can email us at education at dday.org. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. I look forward to seeing you guys again soon for an upcoming program. Um, let us know about your poppies. Share photos of your poppies and your cards. And thank you guys for tuning in.